Give to God what belongs to God. The reading from the Gospel of Matthew leaves us with these final words. But if we read this commandment to give to God what belongs to God with an ecological lens, what types of behaviors might be demanded of us? The lectionary places these readings from Isaiah, Psalm, Paul, and Matthew together, inviting us to read these texts in and through each other. I will attempt to trace an ecological thread throughout these passages. This week's readings focus on God as the ultimate caretaker. The first reading from Isaiah invites us to reflect on God as the one who delivers, who will return the people back to their land. The psalm, offering praise to God, is often linked with this passage from Isaiah. In both texts, there is a trust in God's future activity. Even in his letter to the Christian community in Thessalonica, the Apostle Paul opens with thanksgiving to the divine. Give to God what belongs to God. The gospel reading presents us with a particular challenge. The passage also appears in the synoptic gospels of Mark and Luke. Here in Matthew, in an attempt to puzzle Jesus, the Pharisees ask him about whether or not they should pay taxes to the emperor. Jesus asks them to present the coin. He asks them whose image and engraving it bears. Jesus prompts them to answer their own question. He also leaves the gathered with the task to give to God what belongs to God. When we return to the psalm, we see that ultimate praise is what is due to the divine. The lyrical passage invites us to sing to the Lord. This is a kinship chorus that includes all of creation. Rich with ecological and celestial imagery, the psalm emphasizes God as creator. It's, an, it's comprehensive understanding of all of creation includes all the earth, all lands, all nations. This passage of enthronement reaffirms God as the sustainer and the caretaker of all things, of all living and non-living things, all visible and invisible things. In anticipation of a renewed future, the praise is due to the divine. So give to God what belongs to God. But what happens when humanity confuses the things of God with the things of the emperor? If human greed interchanges the dignity of the planet with the pursuit of the coin, do we lose sight of what belongs to God and what belongs to empire? What happens when the earth is exploited, when oppressed communities are made more vulnerable? When the shared plight of marginalized communities and the earth are ignored, humanity hands over to the empire what actually belongs to God. In his encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis reminds us to, quote, listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor, unquote. But perhaps in giving to God what belongs to God, as Jesus asks us, the praise of the earth and the praise of the poor might occupy the same key. This means that we must attend to and care for our vulnerable kin, which includes poor communities of color and the entire planet. All of creation is interconnected and bound to one another. The psalm invites us to engage in this planetary chorus. Within the scope of sacred Christian music, African-American spirituals also offer a grammar for reflecting on how humanity and creation are bound together in the love of God. For example, the lyrics to the song, he's got the whole world in his hands, rejoins and reconnects kinship ties between brother and sister, wind and rain. All are tied to one another in God's love. So give to God what belongs to God. In his recent document, Laudate Deum, Pope Francis writes the following. He says, quote, 
Praise God is the title of this letter. For when human beings claim to take God's place, they become their own worst enemies, unquote. Give to God what belongs to God. Praise is what belongs to God. We who are flesh, we who are kin with the land and the water, with the earth and all the stars, we are called to give God praise in a more complete and glorious way. Amen.